I have I have producer's hippo today. A creepy bondage hippo he sent me. That's up. Popper. Popper. I'm a terrible ventriloquist, you can see. Popper. Popper. And then it does this thing. Oh, maybe it doesn't anymore. Nope, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't have gas problems anymore. The hippo is no longer flatulent. Good. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. And I'll tell you, when I got this thing in the mail, like Mike sends me some random shit sometimes. Like he sent me the, the hippo pimp ring. Mm. But I got this package that I wasn't expecting that I didn't know was coming. And I open it and it's like this hippo in a bondage collar. And I'm like, okay, well, Mike's gotten a little weirder. Mike's a neat guy. He sent me a gib suit for Halloween. I I helped. I'm sure that was a team did. effort. I'm sure you did. Um, yeah, so I was a little confused by the fact that he sent me, like, a bondage hippo until I saw, like, the CBS logo on the receipt, and apparently it's an NCIS thing. I don't have TV, so I don't watch that show. But, you know. Yeah, my dad loves that show. It's an awful, awful show, but my dad loves it. I have friends that love it. I think I've seen a couple episodes. Like, it's so it's, bad. it's it's a standard procedural. It's not terrible. Yeah, but it's no, it doesn't uh, understand anything like science or science. Most procedurals don't. I know. I know. Like I like the show Bone. Well, I used to like the show Bones. But their artist, who's a sculptor, has like d designed like a three D holographic magic thing that recreates crimes. It, it, the virus, it, the virus engraved into the bone. The virus engraved into the bone. Yeah, oh, like, that show. Television doesn't understand science. Well, speaking of things we don't understand, um, shall we begin this this horror show that is our thing? Let's do it. All right. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this, I can't, I almost cannot believe this one. The very first, the very first fucking story, I'm like, no, I'm, I, I'm ready to call bullshit because it's just, do you like Little Shop of Horrors? Uh, it's okay. You're fan. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I like Little Shop of Horrors. I'm a fan. I, I love that the show. It's it's fun. Um, so that's why when I see this story, I'm like, you gotta be shitting me. Yes, there you go. Deberry dentist accused of using laughing gas in front of patients. And this is, of course, Florida. State has suspended a DeBerry dentist license after investigators say she was using laughing gas in front of patients before doing procedures. Dr. Sharon Osteen has been practicing dentists for almost two decades, and uh, according to investigators, she was accused of inhaling nitrous oxide, then conducted procedures. Nobody likes going to the dentist to begin with, lady. Like, we, we all... I, I have like a visceral fear of going to the dentist. So if I saw them shooting up to get like, oh my God, I would start clawing through the chair. Everyone right now. And I have the claws to do it. Yeah. Everyone right now watching has got, I'm your dentist going through their heads. They just can't stop it. Son, be a dentist, be a dentist. Exactly. I don't know the rest of the words. That's pretty much all I know about that song. Open wide. Here I come. That's that's one of those things that would... And you're right. I don't like the dentist either. I've had to go. And... no one I don't like the dentist because I had the orthodontist from Auschwitz. And ever since then... Yeah, no. My orthodontist was... Oh my god. So bad. I didn't my know they had orthodontists at Auschwitz. Well, they did. And when he retired, he moved to Long Island. And he broke two of my teeth in half, taking my braces off. Because he forced on brackets that were too small. When you say my childhood was like saw, yeah, like these two guys, I'll show you. I don't know if you can see. They're obviously fake. 
they had to cap them because he just snapped my teeth right in half, taking the braces off. It was good times. I have gums that have still never healed correctly because he fucked them up so bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, actually, maybe if he had been inhaling the laughing gas, it might have... Maybe that would have helped. I don't know. Like, he needs to relax. No, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, I've had... I could not relax and because, you know, as it is, I'm just like, okay, I've got to get this done. And I just sort of grin and bear it, so to speak. I don't think I could do that if I saw my dentist because they've got sharp things in my mouth where I do not want them. Just ugh. don't do At least that. Not if you're not getting paid for it. Yes. We're strange. And we're still in Florida for the next one. Um. I, you know, it's it's always weird when we try and talk about sexuality of any kind on this show because we are such children, all of us. Every single person here, it, it's anything we have to do, just trying to talk sexuality in the slightest bit seriously, it's like, <laughs> penis, <laughs> boobs. So this is one I just don't understand. Is is this a fetish? Is this, is this a, a, a problem? Is this a disorder? Because... Of all the places I would feel comfortable doing this sort of thing, this is not the place. Woman, 29, arrested after being spotted masturbating in a Florida Starbucks. Hmm. Woman was uh, spotted masturbating in Starbucks, was arrested yesterday after Florida cops searched her purse and found a pipe with cocaine residue. Police were summoned to the Brandonton business by the staff at Starbucks regarding a female that was in their lobby and masturbating. When an officer questioned the woman, uh, Jennifer Peranian, Peranian, oh, I got that one. She reported that she was waiting to go to a local hospital. They offered her a ride, but asked to check her purse first. Uh, they discovered the cocaine residue. She denied ownership of the pipe. They always do. And uh, she's been held on, on jail in lieu of eleven hundred and twenty dollars bond really so she was waiting to go to the hospital at starbucks mm -hmm. and decided to pass the time by mm -hmm. foaming her latte i mean did she not have words with friends on her phone That's a hell of a fucking innuendo. I know, right? No it kind of works, though. No one hears tomorrow morning people are going to get up and get coffee, and they're going to think about that, and they're going to go, oh, oh. Enjoy your lattes tomorrow, everybody. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Of all the things I can think of, top of my head, ten things to do in Starbucks that is not masturbating. I mean, I know people that are really, really fucking into their coffee. Like, I'm really, really into my Pepsi. But I don't, like, the diner down the street from me serves Pepsi, and I love them for that, and they make homemade flan, and I love them for that, and apparently it's tangent night. But anyway, I don't go down there and sit in the booth and, like, take care of business because they brought me a Pepsi, and I love my Pepsi. <laughs> well, it's just like, okay... Browse so, the internet. Compliment a stranger. Do jumping jacks. Recite a sonnet. Sing a song. And uh, you know, you know, if if you really, if you really, really got to scratch that itch, they got bathrooms there. Yes. I mean, because you know, you're sitting over there, and you know, th th there's always that guy at Starbucks who's trying to, who's on his Mac, trying to look like he's important, trying to type something. You know, he's the next writer. I don't drink coffee, so I don't really hang out in Starbucks, but I'll take your word for There's it. There's always that guy. And he's he's there, you know. He's got the scarf. He's got the glasses. The, the horde room. Yeah, he's he's there. I, I think even he would be a little thrown by, uh, you know, he, he just sort of... No, he'd be taping. Uh, yeah. I wonder if someone pulled the When Harry Met Sally. I'll have what she's having. Um, maybe. Well, it depends on how excited she seemed about it. I guess. This... And then she did get arrested. And what was she going to the hospital for? I don't know. She never said. I don't 
want to know. Because, I mean, if you feel well enough to do that in public, you're probably not desperate to go to the ER. Yeah, you know, if, if you are in that much pain that you have to go to the hospital, you're not just thinking, you know, I need to Unless go. she was checking herself into the psych ward for, like, chronic... Crazy sex addiction or I would call it just nymphomania. Speaking again of things that should not go together, um, it is the 21st century and advertising has changed as so as it does so often, and sometimes people have to get creative to sell their wares. I do, however, maintain there is a line, and uh, I think this guy, us uh, from Poland, Warsaw. I think this guy has crossed it. Polish coffin maker uses nude models to sell wares. Now that is creative. Polish firm that makes coffins has angered the Catholic Church by trying to drum up business with a calendar depicting topless models posing next to its caskets. Oh, one image not in them. One image from the uh, 2013 edition of the calendar is a blonde model wearing only a skimpy thong with a snake draped around her neck, reclining on a coffin. And another, a woman wearing a crimson corset, is depicted the pulling the heart out of a man lying on a casket. Again, on, not in? On, I guess, yeah. My son had the idea of creating the company's calendar so that he could show something half-serious, colorful, beautiful, the beauty of Polish girls, and the beauty of our coffins, said, Ms. Linder, said Mr. Linder, the firm's owner. And why is the church mad? Like... It's not like the naked model goes into the church for the funeral. I know, the yeah, this is one of those things like the church said they condemned it. Uh, church spokesman said that human death should be treated with solemnity and not mixed up with sex. Who asked you? Yeah, they don't do our job, obviously. Uh, yeah, but who asked human you, Human death is dude? mixed up with sex all the damn time. But, I mean, I, 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 I kind of don't have a problem with this. You it's don't? creative. I, my only problem is they kind of missed the ball. Like, they kind of missed the mark on not having the nude models laying in the caskets. I just, you know, normally you're... Or, you know, ripping the hearts out of guys laying in the caskets or what have you. But I don't get how ripping a guy's heart out is sexy. Normally, there are two people who need a casket. There is people who are <laughs> getting older and they want to make plans before they go. <laughs> and then there are people who they've just lost a loved one. I don't see these, this, this boobs falling into either demographic unless you have a dirty old really? man. Really? Because last week we did a story about a guy who had his wife's vagina carved on her headstone. Touché. Seven days ago, sir. Touche. The world's a crazy ass place. I could, I, I could see there's like a, a 30, uh, 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 an 80 year old man going, does the oak one come with the blonde? <laughs> well no it's you know it lightens things up a little it puts the fun in funeral you're planning your funeral it's a solemn time it 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 just it lightens the mood just a little bit and who doesn't need that uh... okay we we've got also yeah merrick points out that this is going to be a cult hit with the goth community yes it will yes if, if they don't sell coffin if they don't sell coffins they will at least sell a fuck bunch of calendars they will, they will sell those calendars for sure well next up on our magical mystery tour of oh god oh god make it stop this is from santa cruz um is that what the lady at the starbucks was saying <laughs> oh god oh god make it a venti so, there I have seen, we have seen people do some of the most bizarre shit under the influence. Mm -hmm. I think this is a first for us. This, this is, he was calm, he was collected, he was just not where you should be when you're calm and collected. 23-year-old Ben Lamond was arrested early Thursday morning after he was spotted taking his clothes off and lying in the middle of Ocean Street. Police responded to reports of a man wandering in and out of traffic, removing his clothes, and lying in the street. When an officer arrived and tried to contact Brendan Bo Bros, Bros ran north on Ocean Street uh, toward Southbound Highway. The officer chased and was able to detain him, although he attempted to run again and was stopped a short distance later. 
The officer observed that Bros would appear to be under the influence of hallucinogen. He was booked into jail in suspicion of being the influence of drugs, trying to resist arrest. I, I you know what? I can't, I can't help but think it, it, the the officer heard in the distance. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. But the gingerbread man has his precious gumdrop buttons. Not my gumdrop buttons. That 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 was a that that was a yakety sax moment if ever there was one. And imagine the middle of the road. I know. That's not a good place for a nap. It's really not. I just keep thinking of the old cliche of your mother telling you to wear clean underwear in case you get hit by a car, and maybe he wasn't. <laughs> it's like, and oh thought, damn. Yeah, and thought better nothing. <laughs> Can you imagine just being in traffic with a guy ran by with a cop chasing after him desperately? That's one of those out-of-context moments in your life that just make you blink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. You just, you, you know, you're you're talking with your family, the kids are in the back, they're watching Spongebob, you're having a chat, you're on the road, suddenly naked guy. No, no one expects naked guy. No one expects that! Just suddenly penis. Why? Suddenly penis is standing beside you. <laughs> You're still stuck on Little Shop. <laughs> oh, but just... I mean... But yeah, lying in the street. What the fuck drug was he on? Was Is there a drug that makes bad ideas seem like good ones? Don't all drugs do that? For me, it's tequila. I get tequila, and all of a sudden, every idea is awesome. Okay, next time we hang out, I'm getting, like, a bundle of fireworks and two bottles of te tequila and just seeing what the fuck happens. Trust me, it's a bad like. idea. It's a bad idea. Mm -mm. A lot of fireworks. Get those mortar launcher motherfuckers. It would be awesome. Um, okay, this one is going to piss you off. I, I already know uh this This one is, is going to... <sighs> God damn it. Guys, if you're in love with someone... There are ways to handle this. There are ways to let them know. There are ways to tell them you're interested. Productive ways. Ways that are good for everybody. Either you're rejected, accepted. There are established ways to do this. This, not one of them. This is from Madison in Wisconsin, I believe. Man, quote, crazy in love. Broke into apartment for woman's bras, panties. A man obsessed with a young woman allegedly broke into her parents' apartment early Sunday and demanded bras and panties that belonged to the object of his desire. Um, Jose Hernandez Ordonez, 22. Ordonez. Of, Ordonez, okay, thank you. There should be a tilde, but there isn't. There is no tilde. Uh, told Fitchburg police that he was drunk and high on cocaine when he broke into the apartment where the young woman lives with her sister and her parents. He told police he was crazy in love with the young woman and gone to the apartment to tell her how he feels. But because he was so high, he wasn't thinking straight and had no self-control. Okay, so if they lowered his inhibitions, think about this. What he what he was saying on the outside was, I'm going to have a talk with her. But on the inside, it was all bras and panties. Okay. Generally, as I understand it, the goal is to get the bra and panty off of the girl. Like, her taking it out of the drawer and handing it to you... Well, no, she really wasn't where you, there. ...where you want to be. Oh, God. she. Oh, God, it gets worse. She wasn't there. The woman's 10-year-old sister was alone in the apartment. She told police after breaking the apartment through the girl's bedroom window, he threatened her by implying he had a gun. They would shoot her and her parents if she called police. He then demanded she go into her sister's bedroom and get her... I love how precise this is. Six pairs of her underwear and six bras. He also questioned the girl about the sister's current boyfriend, saying the young woman had to break up with the boyfriend or he would kill the boyfriend. Jesus Christ! Uh, 
okay, that just tipped over into unacceptable. It wasn't unacceptable before? Well, yes, but... Run-of-the-mill unacceptable. It wasn't unacceptable before. I mean, Jesus Christ. It was unacceptable before, but it was low-grade unacceptable. Harassing a 10-year-old for somebody's underwear is high-grade. What? High-voltage unacceptable. What? He didn't have a gun, but he said he did. But still, what in all of the fuck? And don't sit there and try and have girl talk with the kid. You're threatening her. What's his, what's her boyfriend like? No! You crazy fuck. What was he going to do with all of her underwear? And why precisely six pairs? Well, you got to have match sets. Why six? Yeah, because then you're left one day of the week without a set to wear. I'm just saying, guy this batshit crazy, you know he's wearing her underwear around if he gets it. That's all I'm saying. And finally, dudes are, into some, dudes are into some shit. Well, finally tonight, we have some good old-fashioned you fail. Um, if you had to move recently, or I've had, I've had to move stuff around. Big loads of, of, of stuff you take from your old house to another. It's one of those things where you're trying to maximize whatever space you can and, and get everything into one vehicle to cut down on costs. But I was, tended to be rather careful about the procedure, even though it was a mishmash of bungee cords and tension belts and tarps and it didn't survive very well. But everything stayed in the vehicle. This guy has me beat. Um, and I will stress, as you see this headline, no one was injured, which is also amazing. This is from Arizona. U-Haul truck explodes in North Phoenix. Whoa, look at that picture. U-Haul truck exploded early Friday morning, leaving a man forced to buy all new belongings. Uh, the man loaded a gas grill in the back of the truck but forgot to turn off the propane tank. Widespread debris field covered several blocks. <laughs> I one of the guy, uh, one of the people nearby. I've lived on air bases before, and I thought it was a sonic boom and a Janino carry. Wow. Nobody was hurt, but Jesus Christ. And he was apparently insured. He has auto and renter's insurance, though his premium... Does the insurance cover your own stupidity? If it does, his premiums just went... A sp premiums exploded, too. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> that truck is amazing. I'm going to put that on the big screen. That picture, oh, my God. And I love that all his shit is still where, like, technically in the truck. <laughs> it's just that there is no truck for it to be in anymore. The truck like, has gone away. Like, all the stuff is still where it was in the truck. It's just the truck is no more. Let's see. Oh, is, is there a video? Let's let's see how this if this video works. If it's going to be a bitch, let's try it. Are you going to work video? It seems like it's one it wants to be a bitch. Ah, it's going to be a bitch. Oh, well. You want to be a beach? Yes. Video. Yep. Oh, well. But still, it, it, that, I, number one, that's miraculous. That is goddamn miraculous. It's amazing that he wasn't hurt driving that thing when it blew to kingdom come. <sighs> I know! That's, that's just one of those amazing, holy God, you are so lucky, you idiot. Yeah. On the other hand, that was must have been an amazing day for the neighborhood because all of a sudden it's raining stuff. Well, you got an, some kid you down the block it? got a free Xbox. This guy got a bicycle. This guy got himself a new color TV. How do you explain that to the U-Haul people? <laughs> when you tow that busted ass <laughs> truck back to their lot. Hey, uh, U-Haul. Explain to them what happened. Yeah, um, funny story, but first, a question. How do you feel about a little bit of scorching on your vehicles? Just, you know. Have you guys thought about going into the open moving van business? Yeah. I think it's a growth industry. Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
Of course, this is the kind of thing Mythbusters has ruined me. I've got to say, as if I wasn't ruined already, but Mythbusters has ruined me. I look at this and I'm like, oh God, I wish there were video of this actually happening. Or better still, I would have loved to have been there. Mythbusters has done that to us. No, I see. I lost t teaches me that you don't want to be too close to exploding things because giant metal doors that say quarantine will come flying and land on you. Probably not off a of U-Haul. Not off a of U-Haul. But it probably had a big metal back door. I just, I want... I'm just saying, flying debris, not the place to be. And I didn't mean for that to rhyme. I want to see the big bada boom. I want to see this. I, I'm just... Bada boom. Again, I'm amazed nobody was hurt. That is a miracle. Ah, that's pretty impressive. You'd think, like, at least he would have hit something. Nope. Because I would lose control of the vehicle if it blew the fuck up while I was driving it. Nope. So yeah, I guess I guess what we learned this week is um pack carefully. Check your propane before you pack it. Pack pack fucking carefully. Um Yeah, also we learned um there are some innovative ad campaigns out there these days. I like it. You like the you like the boobs and coffins thing. Sure, why not? I told my niece when when we had my dad's wake, they only you know we had an open casket uh -huh. and they only opened the top half. And my niece Holly says, "Aunt Tara, why is only the top half open?" And I said, "Well, because Grandpa's not wearing pants." <laughs> you didn't. And she looks at me all wide eyed and goes, "He's not, Mommy. Grandpa's not wearing." Pants. Oh God damn so it! She's like, "Really, woman." You gotta bring a little levity. Dad would have laughed at that. He would have thought it was funny. But then I was like, no, he's he's really he's wearing pants. I was just kidding. <laughs> My dad would have thought it was funny. I'm here to tell you. Speaking of not wearing any pants, we've learned that uh the middle of the road is not a good place for that. Mm -mm. Also, drugs apparently they they Drugs make stupid. I think that's all we need to know in life. Drugs make stupid. You learn that every week. Every week, yeah. Also, a penis can happen to you at any time, so be prepared. Yes. yes. And you can love your coffee, but you can't love <laughs> your coffee. Like, steam your milk in private at home. Oh. Really? I I could do this all day. I know you could, and that's what makes it awful. That's that's why I have this job. You need somebody to provide this necessary service. We've uh we've learned that there are productive, reasonable ways to express your feelings for someone that don't involve accosting their their preteen sibling for yeah. underwear buy a girl lingerie if you are involved with her in that way don't just buy random girls lingerie that's creepy flowers if you are involved with a girl in the proper capacity fine buy a girl lingerie don't confiscate hers you want to wear women's lingerie that's fine i'm not gonna fucking you judge you buy your own that shit costs a lot of money bras not cheap yeah. You're not taking my bras, buy your own. I've been shopping with girls before. Those things are not. I'm like. No! My underwear, I get like 12 for 5 bucks in a bag. Yours is like $300 no. for a fucking bra. And ours has to be cute, and that costs more. No, you're not stealing our fucking underwear. There's a bar in New York City. I forget what it's called, but you're supposed to. I, like, I forget what the deal is, but the whole back of the bar is covered in bras. Like, hundreds of bras. And I asked the friend that I was with when I went, well, there's something, and you have to give them your bra. I forget why. Whatever certain drink. And I'm like, fuck you! Those fuckers are like $40. If, I, if I'm giving you my bra, I'm drinking for free for the night. Fair. And, 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 and finally, we learned tonight... That, that and the thing, I feel like I just got myself in a lot of trouble. Yes, you did. And finally... 
for tonight. We we learned that um, Little Shop of Horrors, fiction, not documentary. Um, don't do that shit. Mm. It's for the patients. It's, mm. you know... Or for recreational use on the weekend. You have to wonder if she started singing that shit. Mm-hmm. What? Nothing. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's when you put the spit sucker through the dentist's eye and you fucking run. <laughs> I, I believe you would do that. Oh, hell yeah. Did, did you hear my story? I hell have... yes. I will kill a fucker with a spit sucker if I have to. Again, I didn't mean for that to rhyme. <laughs> No more rhymes. I mean it. I can just not. Now I just have this horrible vision of brains getting sucked out through a spit suck. Yeah, it's like a horror movie in here. Jesus, how has that not made it into a horror movie? Vitreous humor through the spit. Ah, uh, oh, great. Now we're... no one is sleeping tonight. No one is fucking sleeping tonight. So everyone, Starbucks. Spit suck. I mean, spit suckers couldn't really be ruined. They are awful anyway. Of course, I, I say everyone is. No one is sleeping except one guy is furiously masturbating right now. 